All right, so types of microscopy here. Basically, there's two big categories of microscopy. Light microscopy, which is the kind that we do, right? Our microscopes bend the path of light, okay, which we talked about in the microscopy lab. They bend the path of light in order to make the images appear larger, okay, by refracting it through lenses. And electron microscopy, right, which involves bombarding the uh, specimen with electrons, okay? Now, electrons are incredibly small. As a result, the resolution of a electron microscope is far greater than the resolution of a light microscope, right? Because it's using smaller particles, okay, in order to produce the image. All right, now there's advantages and there's disadvantages. The advantages of light microscopy are that you can look at stuff while it's alive. When you bombard something with electrons, it's dead. Okay? And in fact, even the preparation to bombard something with electrons will kill whatever it is you're going to look at. So you can't watch a process under an electron microscope. You can watch a process under a light microscope, provided it's not too small. Okay, So there's kind of advantages and disadvantages there. All right, so obviously microscopes have an important role. They allow us to see what's going on at the cellular level, because that's very small and we can't see it with the naked eye. Okay? Um, earliest microscopes were light microscopes. Okay? Uh, when you get into university, you will probably have the uh, benefit of using a binocular lens, okay, or a binocular microscope okay, that actually has two eyepieces, right, which eliminates that thing you were probably noticing by the end of the lab okay, yesterday where your one eye is getting kind of tired from being shut all the time. Okay? Um, these work quite a bit better, but they don't magnify any, any more or less okay, than the ones we have. They sometimes have one extra lens where ours just has that stud. Okay? Um, it's called an oil immersion lens, and it will magnify about 600 times. Okay? Um, but it's a lot more of a pain in the neck to use. It's difficult to clean because you always have to put oil on the slide, and then the microscope's lens actually sits in the oil, and, and yeah, it's just a mess. Okay? But it works really, really well okay, when you uh, get to use those at university level. An electron microscope, okay, um, obviously, it's focusing electrons onto the specimen. So basically, it's an electron gun and a series of magnets. Okay? The magnets act as lenses. Right? Because what they can do is with a magnet, you can cause the path of the electrons to be changed in the same way that a lens changes the path of the light. Everyone follow me there? Okay. Now, um, resolution, resolving power, magnification, kind of terms we need to understand. Okay? Your resolving power is how well or how small an object your, your eye can discern. Okay? Uh, or how how much detail you can see at a very, very small level. Right? So the human eye can, can discern you know, kind of the thickness of, of a hair. But sometimes if you had two very fine hairs and they were right together, would you be able to tell that there were two? Not always. Okay? Because our, the human eye can only resolve down to a certain size. Okay? Beyond that size, we simply can't see it. It becomes blurry for us no matter how well we squint or whatever at it, simply because we can't resolve that small. But if we magnify, that increases our resolving power okay? because now we've made the object bigger. Well, a light microscope will allow us to take what the naked eye can do, which is about 100 micrometers, because if you did actually look at your slides, the other day of the paramecium in the amoeba, and you held them up to the light, you would actually have been able to see the little specks that were the paramecium amoeba on the slide. Okay, we could see them, but we couldn't see the parts of them because we can't resolve that low. With a light microscope, we can resolve down to, even with a really good one, down to around, you know, let's say 10, um, sorry, to about 1,000 nanometers. Right, would be about as far down as we could go. For an electron microscope, we can go down even further. Okay? They can resolve some of them down to even a small molecule. Okay? They can't see much detail about it, but they can resolve down to basically a molecule being kind of a ball, or maybe a couple of balls or something. Yeah. Okay? Um, all right, so obviously that, that gives you some idea kind of, of the uh, abilities, okay, resolving powers. <coughs> All right, so resolving power, here's, here's kind of another idea of it. Okay, if I'm looking at a water flea with the naked eye, this is about my, 
This is about my resolving powers, these big circles here, which means I'm not seeing these little parts here in some of these you know, kind of other areas. What I see on th with the water flea is this general shape of the water flea. Okay? Whereas if I look at it under a microscope, the resolving power is now these small circles. And so anywhere where these small circles can fit, I can see those structures. So now I can see those little mouth parts and the little things on the legs and things like that. Okay? Same thing with, the, uh, with telescopes. Okay? If we're looking at, um, you know, through a ground-based telescope, at, let's say, I think this is Pluto we're supposed to be looking at, okay? um, we see that it's you know, a few pixels across. Right? That's as best as we can resolve with a ground-based telescope. With the Hubble Space Telescope, we can clearly see that Pluto has a moon. It actually has many moons right, that we're discovering now as we're going out there, and they're all getting these really wacky names. Okay? Um, but Pluto and Charon, its biggest moon, okay, are resolvable when you have a more... not sh It's, it's C-H-A-R-O-N. It's, it's all Greek mythology stuff. Okay? Um, yeah, there's, I can't remember what the other ones. Uh, they all had strange, strange names, all mythology names. Anyway, okay, they all have to do with the god of the underworld. Okay, that's kind of there's a naming system for moons in the solar system. If you didn't know that, okay, all the moons of Jupiter are named for the lovers of Zeus. There's a lot of them. Jupiter's got like 70 moons or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and anything to do with Saturn has to do with like the harvest and the titans and things like that. Um, yeah, it, there's Uranus is all Shakespearean characters. Neptune has to do with things from the sea and yeah, it's yeah, it's weird. Okay, there's a, but there's a system of naming. Someone had someone had time on their hands way too much. All right. <coughs> Okay, so light microscopes can never resolve a detail finer than about 0.2 micrometers, which is the size of a small bacterium. But they're pretty handy when we're looking at protists, okay, like this. So light microscopes can magnify effectively to about a thousand times the actual size of the specimen. So they're pretty effective at looking at even intracellular processes. Okay, now, would you have to be pretty experienced using the microscope at a thousand times magnification? Yeah, because we kind of struggled at 400 times magnification. All right, imagine at 1,000 times magnification how little a movement of the stage would be required to totally screw something up. Okay, so yeah, you have to be very, very experienced to use those. Okay, an electron microscope, if we want to look at subcellular <coughs> structures like DNA, okay, we want to use an electron microscope. All right, and so this is kind of what an electron microscope would show of DNA. It almost shows the helical kind of strandy structure there. Right? Um, so they f uh, focus a beam of electrons through the specimen. Right? So you've see, you see here is an electron gun, and then we've got all these different magnets. Okay? Some of the magnets are widening the path, and some of them are going through the specimen. Okay? And then you know, so on and so on, and then we get this image on a screen okay? uh, further on down. Okay? Modern electron microscopes can achieve 0.2 nanometers. Right, so a thousand times better than a light microscope. And there's two kinds. The transmission electron microscope. Transmission because it shoots the electrons through the specimen. Okay? And a scanning electron microscope. Scanning electron microscopes will only look at the surface scanning. Okay? The surface of the specimen. They, in both, you have to prepare the specimens by treating them, coating them, with a fine coating of precious metal gold or silver, usually gold. Okay, so it's an expensive process and it kills the specimen. Okay. <coughs> so, um, if we're looking here, okay, transmission electron microscopes aim a beam through a thin section or slice of the specimen. So as soon as you slice something, it's pretty much dead. Okay, um, but you can see quite a bit of, of uh, detail. This is, okay, you know, a mitochondria. Okay, and this here, I think we're looking at like a uh, Golgi, I think, or something like that here, okay, under a transmission electron microscope. We can see a lot more than we could see through the light microscope. I think you would agree, all right? Um, yeah, and they both use electromagnets as lenses, okay, magnify the trajectories of the electrons there. Tra scanning electron microscopes are the ones that give you the cool pictures, though, okay? When you've ever, if you've ever seen something, you know, that you thought, man, that looked really cool, it was probably something that was come through, um, uh, scanning electron microscope. This is a tarantula. 
Okay? Yeah, so you can see all the eyes, and there's all those little hairs on the tarantula. Okay, this is penicillium fungus, the stuff they make penicillin out of. Okay, that's under an electron microscope. You can see all the little spores here because they've all been coated. And then when the electrons hit them, they reflect off, and we get this incredibly detailed picture because every electron is so small, its trajectory gets changed, okay, and we can see incredible detail. Right? This is a human hair. Right, and you can see all the kind of the sheath kind of of the hair and the the kind of splitting of it and the cracks and whatever in it. Okay, so it has to be coated with a thin film of gold. The beam excites the electrons on the sample surface itself, and then those those electrons fly off of the surface and are focused onto a screen, and that shows the topography or the surface of the specimen after that. Okay. There you go. There's the kinds of electron or kinds of microscopy. Light, transmission, and scanning electron okay, are the three kinds. What this here? This is an actinopod. It's a aquatic uh, protist. It's kind of like an amoeba with a shell. This would be the shell. Yeah. All right. You will have a quiz tomorrow, guys. Okay, quiz will be